Hey guys, my name is Precious Price. I am an entrepreneur here in Atlanta, Georgia, and this is my tiny house, The Cove Escape. So I'm excited to welcome you all in, come on. So you walk right in and immediately you are in the living room or the lounge area. Um, this is a day bed. I decided to put a day bed here just so that people can actually sit, lounge, and if you want to nap without going up the ladder, then that is what you can do here. Um, I like it because when you sit on the day bed, it sits right across from the TV, which you will see that's above kind of the kitchen nook. So we're going to go there next. However, over here is also where we kind of have a little table just in case, again, you're just wanting to lounge. Typically Typically people come here um, and people are at least renting this tiny house and they want to lounge, they want to relax. So I wanted a way for them to also eat here if they just didn't want to sit here or sit at the nook. They can just sit, chill and kind of watch TV and again lounge in the nature of it all. So here I have a Pioneer Mini Split. Um, it is heating and cooling. This was honestly like a required technology here in the tiny house just because it does not take up a lot of room. You can put it right on the wall. And again, it's actually controlled by a remote. So again, if I'm sitting and I'm lounging, I don't have to get up and press any button. I can literally just use this remote. If I want to turn it to heat, I can turn it to heat, cooling, whatever. Um, I have my decor here, inhale, exhale, just because again, this is more of like, I like to think of it as like a safe haven, a relaxing place where I can go and get away. Um, because it's tucked away all the way in my backyard, you really aren't seeing a lot of people. There's not a lot of traffic. So the inhale, exhale is more so a way to just remind people who are renting and renting this escape that truly escape and like enjoy yourself relax um from here or from the living or lounge area we then are seeing the closet so i absolutely wanted a closet too just because we need some type of way to have some storage in here so this is where typically we are keeping any type of extra paper towels toilet paper in addition to any extra linens um, in terms of turnover and changing the beds changing the sheets everything is right here and then on top of that there is two racks where if you did want to or if we move some of this stuff you can actually hang some of your clothes as well so it's actually a good amount of space um, for someone even if they wanted to live in here long term um, so up here um, you see a little bit of the faux plant so unfortunately I am not someone who can take care of plants I finally have a puppy so I know how to take care of things but but plants are just not my strong suit but I definitely wanted some greenery in here because all of the windows there's about um, in total I believe eight windows here in the tiny house so it brings in a ton of light so I at least wanted some type of greenery in here so you'll see that we place some faux plants um, up here and even outside and here just to kind of again just bring in the aesthetic of it all and make it really feel comfortable and calm. actually went ahead and purchased um, the shed structure and decided to build the tiny house because I was doing Airbnb here within Atlanta, Georgia. I still do Airbnb or have a short-term rental business. Um, but of course, as we know, March 2020 is when obviously the global pandemic was declared. And at that time, I was actually renting my main home. So the house that this structure sits behind, I was renting that and I was traveling for work. Um, and at that time when the global pandemic was declared, we actually had a stop on all travel for work and I was back within my main house, um, three bedroom, two and a half bathroom by myself, super scared. And I was wondering like, okay, number one, what am I going to do with all of this house by myself for now? And then on top of that, I kind of don't want to pay my mortgage. I hadn't been paying my mortgage. Um, Airbnb was kind of paying it for me um, all of those months prior. So I did not want to continue paying my mortgage. So I was really sitting on my couch finally working from home but I was trying to think of a way of how can I get back to renting in a safe way and I thought about the tiny house because I looked out of my kitchen window from the main home and I saw there's a lot of room back here a whole lot of room you can actually fit an entire other tiny house I would say back here 
But when I saw that, I'm like, all right, I think I wanna put a tiny house in the back and then I can live in this structure and I can kind of downsize, be a minimalist, and then I can rent out the entire main home and continue to make the mortgage on that in addition to any of the costs that I have here. So honestly, for me, um, back then when I was thinking, it was like the perfect plan, like what could go wrong? Um, but that is what drove me to actually building this structure here in the back. So from the lounge area directly across, um, you are going to see the TV. So of course you need some kind of entertainment within the tiny house and when you're relaxing. So the TV actually swivels out. Um, so that you can kind of see it over there near um, the lounge area. In addition to if you are in the kitchen as well, as you're cooking, you can watch TV, watch some cooking shows, and just again, entertain yourself. Now, underneath, the TV, we have the, I like to call it like a breakfast nook, um, kitchen nook. This is pretty much where you can eat. It's a little bit small, but it can certainly fit about just two people, two small people, <laughs> but two people nonetheless. And this is where you can pretty much have your dinner right next to the window. Um, and again, like looking out, there's a ton of greenery outside and around. So I absolutely love that. And I love capitalizing on that as well. And then of course, this is just the perfect place to keep the remote and anything that you need quickly and quickly to grab. Um, but we have some cabinets under here and right here, this is typically where I'm keeping more so like little tools, markers, utensils that I need. Um, and then underneath, this is all of the cleaning. So this is where I'm keeping any of the cleaning supplies, trash bags, air fresheners, all of that. I also did not want to compromise on a fridge. Um, because who doesn't like to eat? So <laughs> I definitely needed more of like a full size fridge. I believe this is the size more so for an apartment, um, which is more than enough. And when you open it up, um, there is more than enough freezer space, more than enough fridge space for you to keep all of your goodies. And again, I did not want to compromise on the kitchen because I am someone that I love to cook. And I know other people typically when you are trying to get away, you're cooking on your own rather than going out to eat or anything like that. So from the fridge, we then have more counter space and of course, the induction cooktop. Um, I was going back and forth with myself honestly on whether or not I wanted to do more of a stove top, include a cooktop, or actually even put in more of like an oven and range and everything. But I figured that an induction cooktop would be the best just because number one, it is the most, I would say, like more of a cheaper option, but also it is quicker. So if you go and you use the induction cooktop, it takes all of two minutes um, to boil water and really cook things on here. So you have, or I have some special pots and pans that you typically use for these and then once you go on here it's actually touch not touch screen but it's kind of touch capable so where that is how you're touching the buttons and you just can cook your meal and there's two so that if you want to make your main dish and your side dish I didn't think that it was I guess necessary to have four different cooktops um, here in the tiny house so from there of course you need a microwave um, in the instance that you do want to go out and get those snacks uh, and you're not wanting to cook of course you can reheat that stuff and then the outlet is up here um, I didn't really like initially how high the outlet was, but there was actually supposed to be a shelf here that the microwave then sits on, but we just never got to that point of actually placing the shelf there. Honestly, just because I didn't find the perfect shelf, I did want it to match this barn door and unfortunately it just didn't do that. So we have it here, but the outlet still reaches up. So again, there is a lot of room here. This is where we more so are keeping our appliances, um, like a coffee maker, food processors, juicers. Um, that's where this is. And then here is more so vitamins, supplements, teas, and all of that so that it can easily be accessed once you actually pull these appliances like a coffee maker, kettle, all of that up here. And then underneath this cabinet um, is even more pots and pans, but also where we are keeping additional appliances like blenders and everything as well. Um, for me and even most of the guests that typically stay within the tiny house, I find that they're more so into more like holistic foods and healing and all of that. So typically they are bringing a lot of fresh fruits. Um, they like to compost. So I find it really cool. So typically all of those appliances are under there for use. And then here is where we are actually keeping all of the spices, of course, right underneath the induction cooktop. Um, now from here, of course, we have more so like the dish in the actual sink area. So again, these dishes can easily fit underneath the cabinet if you need this additional space right near the sink. But I did want to do more of a more full size sink just because again, being someone that 
I do cook a lot and then even furthermore I know other people do as well you are typically going to be doing some dishes and if you don't have a dishwasher you need a full-size sink so I did not want to compromise here as well and then of course um, who doesn't like windows right right outside of the kitchen sink in terms of heating the water we actually have a water heater underneath here and this water heater is for the most part instantaneous it is a ream water heater so once you turn it on it automatically pops on for any of the faucets both in the kitchen and the bathroom to where it's automatically going to heat it as long as you are turning it to that hot setting When I was deciding or when I decided to then put the structure back here, I did a ton of research. So of course, I'm on YouTube and I'm on HGTV watching all of the tiny home tours, the tiny home shows, and I was really trying to figure out what was the best structure for me. So of course, um, as anyone, I would say, I wanted to minimize cost. And initially, the initial plan that I had landed on was a container home. And I started researching container homes initially because if you do not know, shipping containers usually, at least back then, um, about two or three years ago when I was researching, they were around no more than like 2,000 to 5,000 bucks. But uh, because of how my main house is set up and even furthermore, just the neighborhood or the block that it sits on, there was no way for me to actually be able to get that container delivered here in the back. Um, and it was so heartbreaking when I realized that and I found out uh, just because they do typically bring those containers on larger trucks. So it was not able to fit back here. And that is when I then found that I could actually turn a shed into a tiny house. Um, so I started to look for sheds, not just your regular sheds, but your sheds that again might have a porch, they can add windows. And I landed on actually deciding to do a shed conversion. Um, and this was honestly the easiest way I would say to go to market um, because I realized that with a container home, I would have had to kind of had cutouts of the windows, cutouts of the doors. It would have been a lot of um, I'd say construction, a lot more construction than what I have now versus with this shed, the shed actually came with the porch. Um, I was able to select where I wanted to put the door, where I wanted all of the windows and I actually added so many more windows than what they initially had. I believe in initially um, this structure just comes with about four windows. I added near near 10 windows, nearly 10 windows. Um, and it was absolutely perfect for me. So this is a 12 by 24 um, shed conversion with a lofted, it's more of a lofted barn style is what it's called. So it has just one loft rather than the two, but it's absolutely perfect um, in terms of just being able to get it and then it comes just absolutely clear and clean and then from that point um, we were then just adding in the walls so we were adding in where we wanted the the bathroom to be where we wanted additional electrical outlets and it's more so from there just painting and laying floors so honestly um, it could have been if there weren't so many issues it could have been a really really quick job especially with it being a shed conversion it was the quickest way for me to go to market kitchen um, we are going into the bathroom so this barn door is what separates the two spaces which is really cool um, number one because I stained this barn door myself I did not realize how much I loved staining wood until I did this this was my very first project and once I did this I actually went ahead and I stained the ladder that you'll see later to go up to the loft in addition to the front porch so they all match with the same color um, and this was really a piece that I love just because once you walk in the wood and the feel of especially as it offsets on the floors. It's just like aesthetically pleasing. Um, and I always wanted a barn door in one of my houses. So I'm glad that I finally have it in the tiny house as well. And of course, you're gonna swivel it back and we step into the bathroom. So we are now in the side of the bathroom. Um, and of course, once you turn on the light in the bathroom, it actually automatically turns on the fan just so that it can get some good ventilation as people are showering, as I'm showering, whatever. Um, so when you step in, we actually have a full mirror here um, and a lot of good light that was absolutely necessary. Ladies, doing your makeup, just seeing yourself in the morning, you just gotta do it. Um, and then of course, a flush toilet was absolutely necessary for me. I've seen a ton of people um, do more so like composting toilets, other options that I've seen as well, but 
for me, just because I have been used to a flush toilet and it's the easiest to, I guess, maneuver and use, I wanted to just go with a flush toilet just so that it is like, it's simple, it's straightforward. So there's actually two buttons here. I like that it's buttons, just so that if you are doing obviously number one, you have the first button and number two, the second button, just so that we are actually preserving water as well, um, because I do believe that's important since it is connected to my main house. Um, of course, a full toilet and then the absolutely amazing shower. Um, so I love this shower and initially, um, I was not going to go with the glass doors, but the glass doors were absolutely necessary because the space here in the bathroom is not that large. So in order to actually open up the space, I wanted to have these clear glass doors just so that it can feel like it's, it's, it, it is a little bit larger. So these are sliding glass doors. They slide either way. Um, and when you open up this glass door, of course, we are in the shower and the shower actually gives you a really, really good amount of clearance. So once you're in the shower, um, I believe it goes up to about maybe seven feet. And then at that point, there is a little window again to bring in more extra light. I believe that natural light is really important, especially since so much of the sun hits this tiny house absolutely perfectly. It was June of 2021 when I had officially quit my corporate job, um, which was honestly insane to a lot of people because it was a six figure consulting job that I was doing. Um, but I actually found that I had began making more money within my own business rather than at my job. And honestly, this business came with a little less stress. Um, so how I make my money, number one is obviously rentals. So at the peak of everything, I would say about December 2021, I had eight units across the city of Atlanta. I had five apartments um, or six apartments, excuse me. I had a, um, a house right around the corner from this house that I was renting and then I had put on Airbnb. I have my main investment property and then of course I had the tiny house. Um, all legal, all ways that I was actually bringing in rental income via a short-term rental platform such as Airbnb, VRBO, and then eventually we had actually transitioned into direct booking platforms or direct booking like website. Um, and then from that point, of course, once I actually started doing this um, and once the tiny house finished and once people really saw the success that I was making with Airbnb, they wanted to know exactly how I was doing that. So I also make money by teaching other people to do what I do. So number one, how do you get started within the short term rental space, making very, very good money um, and then being able to go ahead and pretty much eradicate your living cost. When we think about it, the cost of living or your cost in terms of where you are laying your head is the, the highest cost you will ever pay in your life for anything. Um, and right now, especially within the housing market, just the rent prices, housing prices are increasing. So I needed a way to eradicate that cost and this was it. So now we are at the work area. Um, a work area was really important just because even prior to um, building the tiny house, I myself was working a bit remote too. And I know that typically and many times I've had renters that are working remote as well. So this is a nice little space where again, you are out, you can see through the window, um, bringing in that natural light, but then you also have a dedicated space for you to get anything done. Your laptop can sit here and it actually provides some additional room because this drops down. Um, this is called more like more of like a drop leaf desk um, but it drops down and that provides you with a little extra room just in case you are lounging with friends and it just gives you again a little bit more extra space to watch TV chill out and then you can bring it right back up pretty easily and it stays there um, and of course this is just my welcome to the cove escape sign um it is just for people to kind of see know how we are calling or what we are calling the tiny house and i'm actually really big into branding as well um so branding and marketing is one of my first loves it's what i studied in school so i figured that it was really really good to actually brand this space so we call it the cove escape number one the cove because it's a little ducked off into my backyard but it's also an escape because if i'm being completely honest whenever i step into this space it no longer feels like i'm in it Atlanta. So of course I've already showed you the day bed slash lounge area. That is one place or one option where you are able to sleep. But 
we also have a loft because what is a tiny house without a loft? So here is that beautiful ladder that I told you I stained matches the barn door. Um, and we go right up to this ladder. So it's a little bit of clearance, um, but I have had someone who has stayed in here that's about six feet. He's over six feet, slept up here and he said that it was absolutely amazing. Now I do want to be very clear. This loft is just for sleeping. There's not a lot of clearance, so there's no other room to do anything else but to sleep. <laughs> Definitely not for anyone who's not comfortable with heights. It's about six feet up off the ground. Um, so it gives you a little room, a little bit of something to work with, but it's a little pretty as well. And then of course, there's also a window up here too, again, just to provide more natural light. If you are someone that is sitting on some extra land, your family is sitting on some extra land, or even furthermore, you are sitting on some extra space in your home, whether it's a basement, an extra room, and you do not know what to do with it, please reach out to me. Um, I can point you in the right direction, help, and really help you to get started in the real estate and even furthermore, the tiny house industry. If you are specifically interested in getting started with learning about short-term rentals, um, and even furthermore, how I've been able to rent my tiny house, House, rent my investment property, rent other people's properties, and put it on short-term rental platforms such as Airbnb, do corporate leasing, then you should certainly check out my Instagram at Airbnb Money. That is where you can find all of my resources. Um, I do have classes, courses, um, where you are able to purchase and you're able to learn about these different ways that I have been able to enter this space. So you can learn about corporate leasing from my corporate leasing webinar. You are able to learn everything about short-term rentals via my masterclass that I have. And then in addition to that, I do mentor people um, and have a, a complete mentorship program in regards to how do you get started, number one, with building a business behind all of this. Um, and I think that's really the main piece. How do you get started building business credit, finding funding so that you can do something like this? Because you should not let your primary hurdle be money. Or even furthermore, your primary hurdle should not be I don't know how. Um, number one, because there are so many ways for you to figure out the information in terms to get started with this. Thank you guys so much for coming to see my home. It's been a pleasure showing you my labor of love. And as stated, if you have any questions, please reach out. My Instagram is at Precious C Price. Thanks. Mm -hmm.